Hi, it's Beefy and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, then this is where I post tutorials and breakdowns of my projects. If you're into design, 3D modeling, motion graphics, cinema 4D, X particles and the like, then you're on the right place. So why not start by subscribing today? It would really help the algorithm find this channel and help me make more content. And if you're feeling really adventurous, then tinkle that bell so you don't miss a thing. Since Insidium Fuse landed, I've been exploring the new features, particularly mesh tools and Terraform FX. And to be honest, they weren't something that I was super excited about. Now that I have them, I've been thinking of different ways they may fit into my workflow. Last year, I was exploring displacement with digital elevation maps to create a model of Mount St. Helens for the 40th anniversary of the 1980 eruption. The problem I had was the digital elevation maps I found weren't of high resolution and the outcome wasn't great. So I put the project on the back burner as I didn't want to spend a lot of money for third party plugins, especially if I was only going to use them once. So I needed to be inventive. Terraform FX has enabled me to be that. I have found using Terraform FX can help preserve more detail of low resolution digital elevation maps. I was pretty impressed with the outcome. It's not an exact reproduction, there are caveats to this process. For one, the resolution of the digital elevation map and also the year it was taken. That's a problem with a subject like Mount St. Helens as it's forever changing. I believe my digital elevation map of Mount St. Helens was taken around the year 1988 and published in 2004 and the volcano has changed a lot since then with new domes forming and new glaciers. Another problem I faced was the actual scale. I guess with some math you can probably get a near enough accurate scale. Math isn't one of my strengths so I eyeballed the elevation using reference photos. With patience and time to explore you can get a pretty good representation of your subject. The tools and terrain effects are pretty powerful but there are some drawbacks in the workflow. By getting to know what these are you'll get the hang of it in no time. In this first video I'm going to show you where you can get your digital elevation maps from, how you can download and prepare them before you bring them into Terraform FX. Then I'll break down the process of bringing your digital elevation map into Terraform FX and how I decided what operators to use and how I use them to sculpt my version of Mount St. Helens. In the next video I'll show you how you can use other Insidium tools to add detail to create an infographic model for a presentation. I use a simple Octane material to texture the model which I will break down for you and finally I will composite it all in After Effects and apply some data callouts to our animation. So without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of ways of getting your digital elevation maps. And the first one is pretty obvious, is to go to Google or any other search engine and use just search for digital elevation maps. And it's going to come up with all kinds of results. The maps that you're looking for are actually these black to white grayscale maps. So the black is the lowest area and the white is the highest area. So you're going to find lots of these. The trouble with this is going to be like kind of potluck. And you may not find the area that you're looking for. My preferred way of getting my digital elevation maps is to come to the USGS Earth Explorer. And I shall leave a link below. And this is pretty awesome. You're going to have to sign up for an account with this one. It's a free service. So when you log into Earth Explorer, you're greeted with this page and you have the map of the world. So you can see where you are at any time. And on the left here, you have your search criteria. So there's are several tabs along the top here. You've got search criteria, data sets, additional criteria and results. So the first thing you need to do is search for your area and I'm going to search for Mount St. Helens. So when I first searched for Mount St. Helens, um, it never came up in the result. So instead I searched for St. Helens. And I just click show. And it comes up with three results here. The one I want is actually in Washington state. So I'm just going to click on this one. And then the map centers onto the area that I want. I'm just going to scroll in here and you can see that this is Mount St. Helens here 
and our search pin is way over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that search pin I'm just going to drag it on top of the volcano. So the next thing I want to do is I want to come into the data sets. So I'm just going to click data set and you come with the search field here. So what we're looking for is digital elevation. So I'm just going to click and open this and I'm going to ignore these fields here. And I'm going to come down to SRTM and I'm going to click this. And there we have the search criteria that we need. I'm just going to check the top one here, which is the SRTM one arc second global. And I'm going to click for results. And there we have our search results. I'm just going to click this. And this is our digital elevation map. I'm not going to download anything. I'm just going to open up this image here. And it's a fairly large image of the area. It's pretty detailed. So what I did is I right clicked and saved this to my computer and then I brought that image into something like Photoshop and I just cropped to the area that I wanted. So once I cropped my image, this is the image that I ended up with and you can see it's like fairly pixelated. And this is what I started with when I brought this into Terraform FX. So the next thing I did, I Googled Mount St. Helens and I got some like reference photos from here. This image here is what I used for my original model and we're gonna build something slightly different today. And if I just click on this one here, this is the this is the image that I'm gonna base our model on today. And as you can see, the, the crater, the dome in the middle has changed significantly. And if I just come into here, then you can see exactly what's going on. And as I Google these images, I can see that this is a very, very dynamic place on the earth and it's changing all the time. So as you can see in this photo here, this is the original dome, which was the 1980 to 1986 dome. That's now all, that's now collapsed away. And then we've got these two domes in the back here. And then around the top here, we have our glacier. So it's a very, very dynamic place and it's changing all the time. So that's a little bit of a drawback if you need to create something that looks exactly what it does today. But um, it also gives you a little bit more leeway to be a bit more artistic. And if you are, if you're really interested in volcanoes and geology, etc., if you come to the USGS um, YouTube channel, there are loads of videos and information for you to actually scroll through, etc., which I think is pretty interesting. Yeah, so you can get some reference from here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick with my original reference here. I'm just going to use this photo here as a reference and I'm just going to go for like a snowy peak and stuff with a bit of steam or smoke coming out of the center here. As you can see, you've got some nice erosion going on here and you've got like the thick snow and you've got like the snow trailing off in the, in the crevices here. Um, here's another one. It's looking pretty cool. And you can see this nice erosion going on here. So this is what I'm going to go for today. And without further ado, let's just jump into Cinema 4D and I shall break down the process of me making this model. Okay, so I've jumped into Cinema 4D here and this is the model that I created. This is based on the later images that I showed you in my reference photos. I just come in here. So this is the front part here is the 1980-1986 dome. And these are the two new domes that are forming in the back here. And this is the glacier that is forming around the top and moving towards the north side of the volcano. And I've got some nice uh, erosion going on here and also some nice details in the terrain. So it's a nice mixture there. And I'm really quite pleased with that. And it will suit my purposes. Okay, so I'm just gonna switch this off here. So I'm gonna hide this, hold Alt and double click the traffic lights there. And I'm gonna come to the terrain. I'm gonna, basically do a breakdown. I'm not going to actually be 
creating each operator as I go. I've already created my model and I'm just going to go through the order of the operators, what they do and why I chose to apply these. I haven't renamed any of the operators. I've just kept them exactly as they are so that it's easy for you to see which operator I've used. But normally I would rename everything so I know which operator is doing what. So I could just jump straight to that and make some changes if need be. So that's basically it. Okay, so I'm gonna start by switching on my terrain. So my terrain is a plane, which is 500 by 500. Um, by default, my segments will be 500 by 500, but I've increased these to 1500 to 1500. And this is to give me a little bit more detail. I think it's a good number to work with. Up here in the HUD display for the terrain here is showing you how many polygons you're using. So I'm using 2,250,000. And my terrain currently is at zero. And my operator gain is zero. And this is my memory usage that I'm using at the moment. Okay, so we're coming to the, if we come down here, I'll just, go through a couple of things of the operator if, if you haven't used terraform effects before um, this is your starting point this is your base and in the add operator tab is where you're going to be adding your operators so your generators are your building blocks and your filters are for adding details and for your creativity okay so the first thing I did was to I wanted to bring my digital elevation map in and the way I did that was to use a TF shader. So this is the shader operator. And when I applied this, I just had to add my digital elevation map. So, so I come to this drop down menu here and I just loaded my image. So I set my sampling to none. Uh, the reason being is that my image is really pixelated and the sampling modes here that interpolate your image um, they were just like interfering and causing artifacts so i'll just set this to none and this that just clear the problem up straight away so if you have any artifacts going on just make sure that your sampling is set to none you should be fine and in the operator here i kept the mode to add i'm going to do that with every single operator that i'm using today i just want to layer on top of a layer on top of a layer so it just builds up this nice natural model and my gain i set to 140 and i just eyeballed that using my reference photos but with a bit of math you probably can work out the, the exact scale of your model math isn't my strong point so i just eyeballed it so i'm just going to switch that on and this is our base of our model and as you can see it's really pixelated really jaggedy and but we have the general shape of our volcano which is exactly what we want here so the next thing i wanted to do is just i was just wanted to smooth this all out so i added a blur operator and this blur operator you can have different types of blur you can have a box blur or gals uh gauls gals whatever it is you can have gals fixed three by three gals fixed five by five by default it comes in box but i just change this to gals because it just keeps a little bit more detail and i increase the radius up to 13. so i'm just going to switch this on and this is now looking more like a volcano so there's still a little bit of pixelation going on here, but we'll be sorting that out as we go. And the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to see the top of the crater here. I just wanted to pull that in and make it a little bit more defined. And the way I did that was to use an erosion. And this erosion I just kept at thermal weathering and I have my iterations at 10 and left everything else as default and that just pulls everything in a little bit and makes everything uh, makes everything not like really defined which is exactly what I wanted there so 
So the next thing I wanted to do was to add uh, another erosion I wanted to add a hydraulic erosion and when I did this it just didn't look as natural as I liked it to be so what I did is I turned that erosion off and then I added a noise so I wanted to add a little bit more detail to the terrain before I did the erosion so once I did that the erosion looked really natural so I just um, applied a noise first and the noise that I wanted to use wasn't in the noise operator. So I just used a shadow operator and I just selected noise from the drop down menu. And I just came into the noise here and I changed this to electric and I changed the octaves to 13 and I left everything else as default. So I just kept the gain at four so that everything's subtle and just looks a little bit more natural. A little goes a long way in this process. So I just didn't want to overpower anything here. So I'm just gonna switch this on. And as you can see, we've got some nice texturing going on there and it's, and it's looking really kind of natural. Okay, so the next thing I did was to add another noise. And this noise is Naki. And I used the noise operator for that. And I'll change the octaves to 15. And in the gain, it's four centimeters again. So it's, so it's gonna add a little bit of definition on top of the noise that I've already applied. And I'm just gonna switch that on. So that's looking really natural there. So I wanted a little bit more variation. So I just came down, down to the distort here and I just enabled this. And it gives you these lovely folds going on here. So this is like sediment that's been washed down and it's piling up and building up on top of each other. And I really kind of like that look. And I just like um, did some fine adjustments with the position. So I'll just change the rotation to sort of around 124, 125. And that just gives offsets it a little bit. And I'm kind of like really digging that look there. It's really cool. Okay. So the next thing I did was I wanted to add an erosion. And this erosion, I'll come to the properties here is a hydraulic X particles and my particle count was 50,000 and my lifetime 30 and radius two centimeters. I just kept everything else as default and I made it three iterations. So I'm just gonna switch this on here and this is gonna calculate down here. So if you come to the bottom left here, you can see it calculating. So it's got three iterations. So every 30 frames, it's gonna be another iteration and it's working out in the background, it's going to apply it when it works it out. And there we go, this is our erosion here, which is looking really natural here. I just want to calm this down a little bit now. So what I did is I just applied another erosion and this erosion was a thermal weathering and I kept the iterations at two and this just calms everything down just a tad makes it look a little bit older so this is erosion happening and over time the sun and the wind etc and stuff and that has eroded these down a little bit so now i've got that i wanted to add some more erosion and you're probably thinking hey beefy's gone like really mad on the erosion here and what i wanted to do was just add a little bit of detail on top of this erosion so i just made this a hydraulic x particles and the particle count was 10,000. Um, my radius is two my iterations are two and i just kept everything as default so i'm just going to switch this on here and it's working it out so you probably missed that i'm just going to come in here and i'm going to switch this on and switch this off so that's off and this is on and it just adds a little bit more detail there a little bit more variation in the weathering which is pretty cool
Okay, so I've lost a lot of the noise there um, that I applied before. I still got some here, but I just wanted to add a little bit more noise again. So I just added a noise operator and I just made this a Naki and the octaves 10, scale 100, and I made this four centimeters as before. And I don't use any distort this time. This is natural Naki, which is adding some lovely detail here. So this is like looking more and more like a terrain now, and I'm quite pleased at this stage. So the next thing I wanted to do was this area here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another window here. So if I come to new view panel, I'm just going to open that up and I'm just going to dock that into the side here. And I'm going to make sure that, yeah, so this is the top view, which is exactly what I want here. So that you can see just where I'm applying um, certain things like a gradient. You just need to pinpoint the area where you're going to be applying this gradient or any spherical field, etc., and stuff. So it just makes it easier to position things. So this gradient I applied down here, and this area here is known as the sugar bowl. I think that's a glacier, if I'm not mistaken. So I just wanted to raise this up because in my reference photos, this was kind of a, a lot larger than what I have here. So I'm just going to apply this and this gradient um, I just kept the fall off curve as normal and the radius is 77 roundabouts and my gain is um, a little bit over 10 centimeters there so I'm just going to switch this on so it just brings up this area a little bit and it's get, making it a little bit more defined which is cool. So the next thing I did is I added another noise. And this noise is another Naki, 15 octaves. I changed the seed and the scale is 50% here. And I'm just gonna switch this on. And this adds even more detail to this volcano, to the terrain here and I like that a lot. So I kind of played around a lot with these um, operators changing the order of the operations here. And it's a lot of it is trial and error. You just have to kind of like, you just have to try things out and just cha change these layers around until you get a look that you like. And so this is, this was like a, an afternoon that I spent making this and there's a lot of trial and error and I got to something that I really quite liked. So I'm not just like layering these on willy nilly. I, there is a, a rhyme and reason behind everything. So now this noise has been applied. I've got the, all this lovely detail here. And now what I want to do is just concentrate inside the volcano here. So I'm just going to come in here. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to raise this area up behind here. Um, so you've got the, the two new domes that are pushing up and it's pushing stuff aside. I just wanted to simulate that in my model here. So what I used was a fold. So the fold operator is a bit of a strange one. So you can have fold bottom or fold top. So basically you can take stuff from the top and fold it to a level of whatever you desire and I chose to fold from the bottom and raise it to the level of 95 centimeters that's basically it so I just want to emulate the new domes pushing up at the back here and the forming of the glacier so I'm just going to switch this on and I use the spherical field in this one and this is the result that you get and I kind of like that a lot it's kind of looking it's kind of looking like the reference photos there so I'll just switch this on and off so so this is the before and this is the after and this is looking pretty cool to me 
So the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to grow my domes in the back here. So I created two gradients. This gradient um, on the left here is 34 centimeters, 34.5 centimeters in the radius and the operator is 11.758 and the second gradient is 9.758 and the radius is 31.183 so I'm just going to switch these on and that's looking pretty cool And then I wanted to add a noise, and this time I use the noise. Just come here. So I wanted to add some detail on the run down to the north side here. And I use a spherical fill for this, and I use a noise operator. And the noise type I used this time was FBM, and I've got my octaves at 30 and my scale at 30 percent and i enable distort just to give a little bit more variation so i'm just going to switch that on there so this is to simulate the erosion of the dome area and it's just washing down with the water from the glacier and it just gives a little bit nice variation there and the next stage i applied was another erosion so this erosion was 100,000 particles, radius 1.5 and iteration 6 and I left everything else as default there and I'm just going to switch that on and it's going to take a little while to calculate so I'll just speed through this. So there we go, that, that's applied now and that's looking pretty smart. So the next stage is I wanted to add another noise. So I used a noise operator and I'm going to apply another Naki. Octase 15, um, I change the seed and the scale is 4%. And the operator I just made to two. So this noise is going to be in the center here. So I created a spherical field. So I want this to be concentrated in this area to get rid of some of the erosion because I lost some of the noise up the top there. And if you look at the reference photos, these are kind of like looking quite rough. And this is kind of looking a lot smooth here. So I just supplied this noise and, and that kind of roughens, roughens it up a little bit and it's looking kind of cool there. And this side is looking a little bit small here. So what I did is I did the gain, a gradient operator. And this gradient operator, I just positioned over the top here. And I put the gain to 5.658. And the radius is 22.183. And I'm just going to switch that on there. And that just brings that up a little bit and makes it a little bit more prominent in the structure there and the next step is I added another noise so I took the shader here so I added the shader operator and that's because I wanted to use an electric noise so coming to the noise here it's electric I made it 15 octaves and I changed the contrast a little bit to 30% and everything I left as default there and I'm just going to apply that and that just adds a little bit more detail there on top of the Naki noise and the gain there I made four centimeters and that's looking pretty smart to me and the next stage I was using my image references and this area here looked a little too linear to me and I just wanted to add another gradient and this gradient is bang smack in the middle here and I just wanted to raise this area up because in the uh, image references it's steep 
here and it flattens out and then goes steep again so I just want to I just want to simulate that so I'm just going to turn this on so I just turn that on and it just raises it up a little bit bit there so it's steeper here flat here and then steep at the top there okay so the last thing I did was to add my spline so I created a spline and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the terrain here I'm going to make this x-ray you can see here that I positioned the spline so I drew this around my domes here because I want, just want to make this more defined that there's a glacier that's moving down the north side here and I made this spline um, pretty detailed so I made it um, make sure it's bezier uniform and I put 124 intermediate points there and so I applied my spline operator and in my spline operator I just dropped my glacier spline here into the spline field and the radius is 25 and the gain is 30 and I just played around with the curves here so the fall off curve I just like reduced a little bit and and I wanted my glacier to be like high in the front and low in the back so it's more prominent on the front there as it's like building up and so I just like change my curve here so it's like high on the front and then low in the back there so I'm just going to switch that on so you can see exactly what's happening and this is my glacier here so this is so this is moving down the north side here and it's low in the back and high in the front and it just adds a little bit more detail and I'm really pleased with that So I'm just going to turn this um, other view off here. We don't need to see that now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this look a lot more like a model. So I'm just going to come to the terrain tab here. And if we come into the object tab, if you scroll down to the bottom, you see something called boundaries. This is where you can add different boundaries and you can add an even border which is looks okay but it's not exactly what I want or you can have a curved terrain so if you've got like a cross section of a planet and the mode that I want is solid so I'm just going to click that and this makes it look more like a model so that I can have the terrain at top and then I can show sediment around the base here And all I need to do now is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to so I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do current state object. So I've got my terrain, base, and base bottom there. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is if I come to the preview tab on the terrain. This is our new digital elevation map and this is like everything that's layered underneath it. This is the final product. What I want to do is I want to save that because I want to take this into when we come into the next stage, I'm going to be using this for our, our material. So I'm just going to save that into my project folder and I've already got one there. I'm just going to save this again because something might have changed slightly. And I want to replace that. So that's all set up now. So my couple of tips for when you're using Terraform effects is to name your layers because I've got quite a few layers here. So if you end up with something really complex, you need to know exactly what the layer is and where it's affecting and what it's doing. So just name your layers it's going to be easy for you to go back and decide so which area you need to change etc so i just kept this as i said i just kept this as normal just so that you can see what the operators are and what they're doing in my in my order of operations here so and the other thing is that the erosions 
So when you apply erosion, everything above it is being affected by that erosion. So if you go back, if you apply an erosion and you go back to change something that's higher in the order of operations there, then you're going to come into problems because this erosion is going to recalculate the gain. Just make sure you switch these off before you make your changes and that will speed up your process a little bit. So, so if you've got an erosion that's got um, quite a few iterations on it, that's going to really, really slow you down and it could cause a crash because like if, you, if you're trying to change something without switching that off, it can create some problems. So that's uh, my two tips for this. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to take this model here and we're going to take this copy of the TF terrain here. I'm going to name that Mount St. Helens. So we're going to take this into a new project and we're going to create a material for it using our digital elevation map tiff that we save from our terrain and we're going to create some elements like a smokestack and some contour lines and we're going to render this out with some passes and we're going to take this into after effects i really hope what i've shown you today has helped you in any way and you've learned something useful from this i would love to see what you've made using this technique so tag me in Instagram at Almost Daily Render. And don't forget to like, subscribe and jingle the bell so you don't miss a thing. And as always, any questions, comments, then please leave them below. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.